Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be painting a hellebore flower. Thanks for joining me to paint a hellebore today. This channel is all about learning how to paint botanicals and flowers. I've started off by transferring my drawing onto 140 pound cold press arches watercolor paper. And then I've masked out the little areas for the anthers on the center of the petals, or sorry, the center of the flowers. And then I'm filling in the center area with a light yellowish green color once I've made sure the masking fluid is thoroughly dry. Now I'm getting started on the petals. I'm using a wet and wet wash for the first layer of wash. I'm using a dark grayish cool purple and then a warmer dark purple for these petals. So I start by wetting the paper with a clean wash of water and then I drop in the two colors and I'm focusing on making sort of a center vein and then dropping in the color in the areas that will be the darkest on the petals and also making sure that I leave white space to shine through. While that first color is still wet, I'm dropping in the warmer purple near the center of the flower and letting it blend in on its own. This is my favorite part of any type of botanical painting, the first wet and wet washes where you build up the majority of the color of the flowers. It's important to make sure you keep track of the wetness of your paper and paint because this is a step that I think a lot of beginners struggle with because they either have their paper too wet or too dry or their paint is not wet enough or it's too runny and this is where they struggle sometimes with blooms and getting hard edges where they don't want them and one of the best ways to do it is just practice 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 but um, if you make sure your water or the water on the paper is a nice even sheen and it's not runny and it's not a puddle and you have all your paints mixed up in advance so they're ready to go to drop into the wash right away that is a really good way to get started with this technique. I'm using a number two Kalinsky sable brush as well as a zero and a four in this video and you can see that I'm actually drawing in some of the veins during the wet and wet process and that masking fluid is working very well right now so I can paint right over it and it's saving the little spaces of white that will be under it when I rub it off so I can paint in the lighter yellow anthers. I used a mixture of Windsor Violet and some Payne's Grey um, and some Permanent Rose as well as Ultramarine to create these mixes of grayish purples for these hellebore flowers and I was inspired by the dark purple, almost blackish um, type of hellebore that we see this time of year in February, March. And so I'm just working my way around petal by petal making sure that I don't work on two petals beside each other at once. So I alternate petals so that one is not, the next door neighbor is not wet while I'm painting the other one as they'll just run into each other. Now I'm just finishing up the last of the flowers for the first washes and I'll move on to the leaves and I'm making sure I don't smudge the flower with my hand with that paper towel that I'm resting my hand on. And again this is the first wash with wet and wet and I'm mixing three different mixes of greens together here. I'm letting them blend together nicely and I'm also drawing in the veins um, as I do this wet and wet wash. So that I kind of get a bit of a soft, faint um, 
marking here and there that will help me um, add in the rest of the definition and veins later on. I really enjoyed painting these leaves and if you're uh, a gardening buff you may look at these leaves and realize that they're not exactly botanically accurate to how hellebore leaves are. Most of, most of them are like an umbel shaped leaf so they have um, five leaves sort of in an umbrella shape but I just didn't um, I wasn't able to get it to work out with my drawing and the way I wanted the composition to go and so I just took some artistic license and laid the leaves out like this. Now I've gone in with a smaller brush and I'm adding on some wet on dry detailing here. I'm adding the center veins into the hellebore flower petals and then I'm rinsing my brush out and I'm just going over them with a little bit of um, clean water just here and there where I want to soften them a bit so they're not so harsh. And just so you know, I post videos every week, so if you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel and you can just hit subscribe and then the bell icon beside the subscribe button. Click all and you'll get a notification every time I post a new video. I'm finishing up some of the detailing of putting the veins in on the leaves and then I'm moving right into step three on the flowers. So I have the first wash in and then I have some dry brush veining and detailing on the flowers and now I'm doing wet on dry and blending out the edge for my third step of my three-step method that I use for painting botanicals and you just work your way around. I mix up a fresh darker version of my petal color and make sure that it's wet enough that I have time to blend out the edges and this is how you're going to get depth and shadow and form in your painting and I don't always use a shadow color sometimes I do but most of the time I just mix up a much darker version of the petal colors that I already used for the first wash I'm just finishing up that step and moving on to adding more color to these stems. I like to make sure that I add again the same colors but much deeper and stronger mixes for the third step and anywhere that a leaf is overlapping or the stem is connecting with the flower where there's some kind of overlap or shadow I want to put a nice dark splotch of it there just paint on a little section and then soften out the edge like a graded wash. Now I just continue and go around and make sure that I have really high contrast. For the beginning of when I started painting botanicals, I was scared to create contrast and hard edges um, and things were very subtle and, and soft, but they didn't really jump out of the page as much. And then it wasn't until I really started adding darker colors and just blending them out and getting that really good contrast that I really started to become happier with my paintings. Now I'm doing the same wet on dry technique on the leaves, the step three of my process and making sure everything is nice and defined and making sure I can see a few more of those veins. Now I'm using my masking fluid remover to remove all the masking fluid on the center of the flowers. And I'm just adding a few more finishing touches to the leaves. I just wanted to remove the masking fluid at that point in time because I didn't need to have it on the flowers anymore and kind of get an idea what it looked like without it on there.
Now I am going to move on to the center of the flowers and to make this color um, sort of stand out and pop I have added some white to the yellow mix for these anthers so not everyone likes to use white paint in watercolor it's a white watercolor paint um, slightly opaque uh, but it does help and I'm not too stuck on the traditional rules I think that whatever works for you whatever you know you have fun with is perfectly fine so I'm going to use white paint now I'm adding in some of the um, sort of stamens, I guess, the little connectors onto the anthers. And there's one of them that didn't really work out how I liked, so I fiddle around with it a bit. I have my chisel brush there that I'm making some of the um, stamens a little bit thinner and more delicate because I liked how the one on the left worked out better. And we are getting close to being finished now. I'm going to be adding in a few more finishing touches here on the centers of the flowers. And my hand blocked a little bit there and coming up in my newer videos I will have a better camera angle so stay tuned for that. I've got some new exciting equipment to share really amazing footage with you soon. So I'm just going around and adding more of the anthers now connecting them to the stems and um, then I've added a darker yellow um, around the edges of them to make them stand out a little bit more so that they're more defined with my smallest size zero brush. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. Please subscribe to my channel. I post weekly botanical art videos and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. So if you leave a comment, I will definitely reply if you have any questions about how I painted this or thoughts on future videos to post. Thanks.